um, first of all, I appreciate Mr. Harshman coming forward with a plan. It's always helpful for the trustees to have a plan crafted by the community, and I look forward to further conversation about that plan. I'm really interested in that plan. I hope my fellow trustees are, too. It's much more important to me to have a plan than constant criticism. So, um, Mr. Harshman, please go forward with your plan. Community members, um, please participate with Mr. Harshman in that. And then I look forward to that plan and further conversation coming back to the board to help guide us. I think it's excellent. Your framework is an excellent uh, uh, framework for us to use as we are discussing um, our schools. And so the last item, trustees, on the, under the superintendent's report is on reinvention roadmap for repurposing consolidations, boundaries, and better facilities. Dr. Cruz. Yes, President Rodriguez and uh, board members. This item we discussed at um, one of our uh, last work sessions, uh, at the last board work session, and the, the item is still before the board. What I heard from the board at that point is uh, that the S, yes, the process needed to go forward, but we needed to have more engagement from our community and our different constituencies. So the, the item was modified to allow for more time for engagement and making sure that we are working hand in hand with our communities. Uh, the purpose of considering these, uh, uh, the purpose for behind having this, this discussion and this, uh, this item is around the use of facilities, including boundary changes, consolidations, and program offerings. And program offerings. It's to ensure that we're providing 21st century learning spaces for all of our students and a wide range of academic opportunities with existing dwindling enrollment and budgets. We want to make sure that we're providing the best lear learning opportunities for all of our students. That includes 21st century learning spaces uh, that will allow for students to demonstrate their strengths and making sure we're providing the best opportunities for all of our students. So trustees, do we have um, any discussions or a motion, Trustee Ellens? I would like to make a motion that the board um, approve the reinvention roadmap for repurposing consolidations, boundaries, and better facilities as put forward by the superintendent in the second round of work with the new timeline. Right. Okay. Is there a second? Oh, I'll second that. And then if I'd, I'd like to make a comment. Sure. D um, then open for discussions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that the, the, the community has this roadmap out in front of them. So is it on our website already? It is. It is. And where? How, sure. how can the community find it that? Is. How, Mr. Reach, how can the community find this roadmap? AustinISD.org slash. Okay. I want to make sure the community can find it because they always want to see these things and they should because they're going to be intimately involved in these conversations. Uh, so it, it is on our website. You would go to um, Board of Trustees and then to Meetings. And that would take you into board docs, which host all of our meeting materials for uh, open meetings. And under there on item 17.3, which is the last item on the agenda, it's at the bottom, uh, you will see this agenda item. And then at the bottom of that agenda item is the attachment. It's the only attachment on there. Okay, and, and I want to let the public know that you can't just go, you can't just click on Board of our Trustees because that's not a link. You have to go to About Us or something like that. That's, or the... No, 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 when you go on to the when you go to austinisd.org and yeah. you pull up the main page. Yeah, it's one of the drop downs from the menu under is it about us? Is about us. And then you find the board. So it'd be help I think whoops, I think it'd be helpful because when I've gone to find Board of Trustees with our new website, I have to go through several stages to find it. So I think it'd be helpful to our public if that was made more prominent so you just go with one clink click and we find it and then we could just find all that information. So can that be done? Um, can. Thank you. Trustee Wagner. Yeah, and I was just gonna say in the spirit of Trustee Tyke's comments, uh, since we have all of our information around uh, the facility master plan and bond uh, projects on AISDfuture.org, can we, um, assuming this is approved, um, add the plan to that site as well for ease of access for the public? Yes, Trustee Wagner, we will do that. 
Thank you. Thank you. Trustees, any other comments? Trustee Matthias, and then Trustee Ash, and then Trustee Singh. Uh, I just want to say that I appreciate uh, the district's choice of language and referring to this uh, process as uh, one focused on the efficiency of campus facilities. I'm the king of euphemisms myself, uh, but I think it's only fair to the viewing public and to the, the community to note, as was suggested in the equity statement by our president, that this could include consolidations, or interestingly, the word that we didn't hear was closures. Um, it's the estimation of this trustee that schools must close. We've lost 6,500 students roughly in the six years that some of us have been on the board. We're anticipated to lose another 7,000 students by 2029. So for us to be thinking about how it is that we're continuing to spread less and less students over the same number of facilities or indeed over an increasing number of facilities now that we're bringing new schools online through the result of our bond program. It's, uh, I think it's in the interest of transparency for our community, it's, it's, it's important for us to be upfront about possibilities which include consolidations we heard in the President's statement or in the words of this trustee, the possibility of, of closure, which is why I think it's just important for us in the same way that this board has stayed the course with respect to name changes of schools named for Confederates for us to stay the course. I think the outline that we have, that the timeline that we have here uh, suggests that we as board will be making decisions by October 2019. I would like to commend the board in advance for having the courage to publicly say, we are going to make a decision in 2019 to right-size this district, to do what, what boards before us have failed to do and to not kick the can down the road, but to take the action that we need to take for the sake of our students and for the sake of the best possible education that we can provide them. So, thank you. Thank you. Trustee Ashy. Oh, uh, uh, Trustee Ashy, Trustee Singh, and then Trustee Tyson. Um, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Cruz and his staff for really taking in all of the information that we handed you at the work session and for understanding, and at the retreat as well, and for understanding um, that our pause went in the understanding that this was a, a multi-year map that we're looking at, that we're going to create criteria, we're going to create a situation to be able to apply this process across the district in an in a equitable way. And uh, to that end, I just want to uh, once again reiterate my desire uh, to really concentrate on our communication around this process and making sure that we are clearly putting out there when and how we are going to have engagement opportunities for our families with plenty of time in advance of those community engagement opportunities for families to plan so that they can make sure that their their thoughts and they are that they are able to share those with with us as we move forward through this process uh, so that they feel connected because I think that that really is the desire of all of our families is in a district that's this size that is the challenge that we face how do we make sure that all 80,000 students and their families feel connected and apart and so uh, I hope that we can continue to move forward with that and that we will as a board get to see even more detailed descriptions of how we as board trustees can also participate in the community engagement and communication process of this. I do want to mention to trustees, uh, Trustee Ashley's comments uh, that the board has requested to be engaged in this process as well in presentations and discussions and so I appreciate that. I should have mentioned that but that will be part of our communication plan and to making sure that we're all in this together we know that there are choppy waters. We know it's challenging. It has different perceptions and different perspectives, but the focus is still on student outcomes. The focus is still on providing the best learning spaces for all of our students. And I said all, not some, not the ones where we think. It really is all. Now, it's going to be involved. It's not going to all be nice and I'll just sort of fit. It's not. This is all very important to all of us. We all know as parents, these are our children. But it's something we have to do. 
It is something that we have to do. And we have this opportunity now ab about you know, providing these 21st century learning spaces. And that's essential. I also want to just uh, inform the public and with our board, as we discussed in previous sessions, that the work doesn't end with the vote. It actually begins saying, yes, this is the strategic direction we need to take. There's going to be a lot of actions along the way. Some you may like, some you may not. I totally get it. But we're not going to shy away from putting that in front of you, putting that in front of our community. By you, I mean our community, our constituency, we have to make sure that we're providing these opportunities for feedback. It's not baked. It is not. It's not cooked. This is that opportunity to say, this is what we have. From what we've heard, different groups have given us different input. It's a matter of consistent communication and engagement and trying to make sure that we're working through these issues. I have confidence in our staff members. We've had some challenging situations already before us that it just, it is what it is, right? But I have confidence in my staff and in their work that we're focused on student outcomes and student learning. We also take from the work on the equity policy that the board is shaping. And that's making sure that all students are successful. This is just one artifact that we can use to demonstrate that level of equity. So just again, it's not all gonna be easy, totally get it. Want to hear more, but it's something that decision making has to come to at a strategic point with the strategic intent of 21st century learning spaces for all. Thank you, Dr. Cruz. Uh, Dr. Singh. I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> Trustee Singh. I'll take the doctor. I kind of like that. Um, God knows there's enough Dr. Singhs walking around. <laughs> um, so I also want to just publicly thank Dr. Cruz um, and the staff for um, really working on this and um, putting a timeline together that I feel that, that we f as trustees feel pretty good about. Um, I wanted to ask your thoughts on how the new equity officer might fit into this timeline and the role of that person um, in helping implement what, whatever we come up with. Oh, thank you for that. And I'm really excited about then uh, our discussions around equity, but then putting in place a and hiring that equity officer and then even some additional staffing to come with it. Because you know, I'm going to come back on that too, right? One person can't do that, you know, 80,000 plus. But I see the way this one could work when we look at our guiding principles on equity, about that great learning space around academic achievement, around neighborhood schools, and having actual. Uh, specific criteria under each one that all goes back to equity the equity piece is around the definition the national equity project making sure that all students are successful that we're recognizing their genius that we reduce the predictability of who's successful and who is not and the other piece is that we eliminate achievement gaps that could be used not only in this conversation but also in communication that's another element where I could see are we providing community are we communicating with our constituencies in the way they want in language in time uh, and consistency of a message. I see it playing out in academics and in curriculum, and that's why it's so important to have that in superintendent's priorities, that it continue around an aligned curriculum, because that has to be there. But I see the definition and then the equity officer helping us shape that definition and having to really checking blind spots. I also see it as just having that expert to come in and just call it like it is. Understanding that's not always the safest thing to do. It's not about being safe. It's about being right for our students. Thank you, um, Trustee Teich and then Trustee Letitia Anderson. So I'm going to say one more time that I think it would be helpful, Dr. Cruz, if you reached out to Mr. Harshman, who is one of our FabPAC gurus, by the way, and that you um, start that conversation with him around the framework that he presented to us tonight. I think it's valuable. The FabPAC has proven to us that the community can come up with some excellent plans and I think that the community uh, represented by Mr. Harshman could come up with plans for further desegregating our um, district. Also, Mr. Uh, Trustee Mathias referred to us losing students. I think that with this plan it could pull students back into the district and I think that we could keep some of the schools that are currently under enrolled open it's going to take some time. This is not an overnight thing. But I think there's, the future is much more optimistic with what I've seen from Mr. Harshman's outline than, and God knows, more, you know, the more minds involved in this, the better. Um, I, I feel hopeful that we can achieve the kind of equity that we're going to be looking for under an equity officer. But I also share the concern 
that Trustee Mathias has raised that we can't wait for that officer to be hired. We've got to move forward. So once again, Dr. Cruz, I encourage you to get with Mr. Harshman. Absolutely. And it is a great document. I especially like where Dusty, because, you know, he's already done amazing work. And so is FabPAC. We've been meeting with them a few times and they're ready to do this work. When we talk about the six C's, it starts with student outcomes. The six C's being a thing that we want to see implemented in our classrooms and in our schools. This is just a way of then having those facilities match up with that. But certainly do appreciate his work and the, specifically the focus on those six C's that truly needs to be need to be institutionalized in our everyday work. Thank you, Dustin. So as we go through this process, do we as a board have a progress monitoring calendar so that as we go, like I said, as we go through this process uh, as a way to ensure that those schools, et cetera, that are affected, that the student learning isn't disrupted. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm asking, do we have a, as a board, do we have a progress monitoring calendar? So if we're gonna go through this process, or when we go through this process, you know, whatever students are moved, I want to be sure that the edu educational piece isn't interrupted to where it's affecting their work. I think that's something, yes, that's something we have to create so that when we talk about transitions with parents and with students, that the focus is on learning and we never take our, our eye off of that because that's the end goal. Uh, but yes, we will de be developing those plans, transition plans, so that families are, families are aware of what's going to happen next and how they can access you know, the, the school, go out and do vis visits at the school, but we'll have a progress monitoring piece for the board's review. Trustee Ellis. I just want to, um, don't take this as a knock because I haven't read this document about integrating schools. I'm fascinated by the concepts and I'm excited to, to see where it might go. But I want to make it very clear this didn't come from FabPAC. It came from some members who have been affiliated with FabPAC. And I think we just have to be mindful of that as we move forward. Um, I also want um, people to know I've reached out to um, Fort Bend ISD has three years ago did a full district-wide boundary reboundary project and so I've been working with some of their trustees to get as much information on that that I'm hoping to bring forward to Dr. Cruz for you guys to consider as well um, I'm fascinated by what we might be able to do with boundaries um, but I'm also realistic and know it won't be the only thing we're gonna have to do so thank you Thank you, trustees. Any other comments? Oh, Dr. Cruz, thank you so much for all the work. I, I do want to recognize publicly that this board has now done retreats for almost 15 hours to have the kinds of discussions um, that we're having today. So I, I really appreciate the board's hard work and commitment to spending time off the dais and, and working together. Um, we have a motion. Trustee Ellis, can you repeat your motion? So the motion is to approve the superintendent's recommended roadmap for repurposing consolidations, boundaries, and better facilities as presented with the new timeline. Second. So we have a motion and a second to approve the roadmap. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. The motion passes unanimously.